Good morning, and uh, it's good to see you. Our reading this morning is from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 15, verses 35 to 50, so at the back end, excuse me. But someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body do they come full? What you sow does not come to life unless it dies. And as for what you sow, you do not sow the body that is to be, but a bare seed, perhaps of wheat or of some other grain. But God gives it a body as he has chosen. To each kind of seed, its own body. Not all flesh is alike. There is one flesh for human beings, another for animals, another for birds, and another for fish. There are both heavenly bodies and earthly bodies. But the glory of the heavenly is one thing, and that of the earthly is another. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. Indeed, star differs from star in glory. So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is, imper is perishable. What is raised is imperishable. It is sown in dishonour, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown a physical body, it is raised a spiritual body. If there is a physical body, there is also a spiritual body. Thus it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. But it is not the spiritual that is first, but the physical, and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, a man of dust. The second man is from heaven. As was the man of dust, so are those who are of the dust. As is the man of heaven, so are those who are of heaven. Just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we will also bear the image of the man of heaven. What I am saying, brothers and sisters, is this. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the perishable. We thank God for his word to us in that piece of scripture. Uh, and Paul is, um, I suppose that the, the reason for this reading is here, is we're living in the, uh, the in, in Easter week, and um, our minds very much on the fact that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead, and, and way back from the earliest days have been real questions about well what does it mean what is this idea of resurrection and what is this idea of resurrection to eternal life and of course we we know that Jesus when he was um, at his resurrection um, he, he became flesh and we know he had physical substance and Thomas could put his hand in his side and so on and so forth we know from uh, John's Gospel that, uh, that Jesus ate food, which uh, to the people of those days was incontrovertible proof that he had a physical body. Um, different again though to think about what it means about the resurrection to eternal life and what, what that is like. Uh, and uh, Paul takes uh, 15 verses to say that he does not have a clue. He does not know, uh, other than to say that it will be different. Um, there's one thing that, that strikes me reading through this for the fourth or fifth time this morning. That uh, there's one thing that strikes me is that uh, that Paul recognised that each star differed from each other uh, in glory, and I, that's really interesting when you think going back two thousand years. That was a very very prescient statement and, and actually way beyond the way things were thought of at the time so that uh, was fascinating but it's still Paul trying to wandering around the room trying to explain to people uh, that actually we don't know what it's like it's right that we should uh, consider that I mean that's, that's not an unreasonable thing to do uh, but our main task of course as, as Christians in the light of Easter in the light of the resurrection is to remember that in that moment uh, of Jesus dying on the wood of the cross God drew the sins of the whole world past present and future into himself and absorbed them so that those who believed 
and actually understood what God was doing would no longer need to carry their sins. They would no need no longer need to bear the weight of them. They would no longer need to bear the weight of guilt. And there is something there for all of us. Don't forget that we are forgiven our sins. That means guilt has no place. We may want to make restitution for our sins, but we don't need to feel guilt. And so our job is quite simply to live the Easter life as people who have been given the freedom to be the people we were created to be. And the prayer for today is God of glory. By the raising of your son, you have broken the chains of death and hell. Fill your church with faith and hope, for a new day has dawned, and the way to life stands open in our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. It's been good to be with you again, and uh, till I see you again, either online or face to face. God bless.